third parties. Love them, hate them, <laughs> probably despise them in most cases. But how many of you are going through a really, really painful situation at the moment with a third party situation right now in your life? Perhaps your specific person that you're in the process of manifesting, maybe it's an ex-partner of yours and they've moved on pretty quick or maybe they cheated on you, left you for someone else. Maybe you guys have been separated for a while, you've just found out there's a third party involved, oh my God. Or maybe it's nothing to do with that. Maybe the third party is actually to do with potential friends and family members who are getting in the way of this relationship. Maybe it's even to do with your business and you're just noticing competition. So third party can, um, it's like an umbrella term for all of these situations. Basically someone is getting in the way um, seemingly becoming an obstacle in you realizing your desires and of course this causes a lot of stress and anxiety and as a result what do we tend to do we get into a state of depression we get into a state of obsessive thinking we're thinking about how they're getting in the way what a wonderful life they're leading together and their relationship always oh, my ex-partner treating them better than they treated me what if they have a wonderful future what if what if what if we drive ourselves mad with all of this stuff so who here is going through that? Is this you? Hopefully you find this video helpful. So stay tuned, get yourself a hot drink, get comfortable. And we're going to go through this together because I'm also in the process of doing a third party removal. So we're going to do this together as a team. First up, my name is Athena Raven. I just want to thank you very much for joining me on my YouTube channel. Uh, please do like and subscribe to the content as well if you like what you see. Click that bell icon so you never miss a beat. I'm a mental health and manifestation life coach and it's all about empowering you on your manifestation journey. I not only teach you about the, the laws of assumption with regards to Neville Goddard's teachings, but I also talk from my own experiences of having done this for, well, consciously for almost 20 years now. And so in that time, I've had a lot of experience. Um, we've removed third parties for myself, for my clients and so this is nothing new we all get into this situation at some point in our lives and i'm here to tell you it's okay it can be turned around and i'm going to teach you about the mindset you should have during this painful process if you haven't done already and if you've got access to it if you're interested join me on my tiktok as well the links to my tiktok instagram and my one-on-one -on -one coaching if you are interested for a more tailored approach is all down here in the description but on tiktok i do some regular live sessions if you've got specific questions to ask or maybe you just want to be part of the family. We've got a lovely little Ohana, as I call it, a little family going on there. And for a lot of us who are going through this painful process, you probably find that you're feeling quite alone and isolated in it because I know that it's a difficult thing to be able to talk to friends and family about, particularly if it's an ex, they're just going to tell you what you want that person back for. And you know, if they're not necessarily understanding of the these universal laws, Perhaps you can't really tell them about manifestation or what you're planning to do or don't feel like you can. And that's OK. This is always going to be my channels and my, you know, uh, social media. And that is always going to be a safe space of no judgment, of nothing but support and love. So feel free to join us. Now, as I've said, doing this consciously for nearly 20 years, I have manifested quite a few SPs back in my life. In fact, one of my clients was asking me if I've ever failed to manifest an SP back. And I really had to think about that. Not meaning that in a, you know, an ego to, oh, it always works for me. Um, no, I really had to think hard about it um, because I've not only manifested them back for relationships, sometimes it has been just a friendship and rekindling that communication and contact. Although there's one that's been going on for a few years now and I'm not worried about it and I'm not, that was one I did uh, a while ago. I still think that will pan out in its own time. But of course, as we're going through this journey, we change our minds, we change our desires quite a lot. We focus on other things. And sometimes this bridge of incidents can take a bit of time to pan out for one reason or another, depending one reason or another, depending how many little pieces of the puzzle need to come together in order for you to get your final picture. And of course, the resistance that we put in the way. So if your constant focus is on a third party at the moment, you know from experience that 
you're manifesting more of that and whatever you focus on is going to grow. Whatever you're planting in your garden, whichever seeds you are watering and nurturing are the seeds that are going to grow. So if your focus is always on this third party, it just becomes a bigger problem. Now this current situation that I have, for example, I know from experience I've manifested third parties out and I consciously manifested this third party situation, which might surprise you, but at the time, thinking that was maybe what was needed, thinking maybe that was what I wanted on some level would make things easier and then have come to the realization that actually, no, what was I thinking? But it was a learning journey. This whole manifestation process is a learning journey and sometimes you feel like you want something because it's gonna sort an issue out and then other times, sometimes in getting it, you realize even more, actually, this is more to do with some inner issues that I had or some fears of commitment that I had or some other um, inner beliefs that we have that we, you know, we end up sabotaging our relationships. We end up manifesting in a third party. We end up because, you know, we don't feel chosen. We don't feel like we're good enough. We don't feel like we're prioritized, you know, really at the core of all of this. And that's happened to me quite a lot. And it took a lot of inner work to get over that. Now in this current situation, for some bizarre reason, it shouldn't have happened because blocked on all avenues, blocked from them, and I blocked my end as well on, on one uh, specific avenue. I was met with this picture. For some reason, this picture got updated, even despite the blocking, it got updated and inadvertently just happened to see it as I'm looking through my chats and picture of, them with their third party, all happy. Well, I have to say that I got triggered and I'm not ashamed to, to share that. Yes, I'm experienced at this. Yes, I understand this whole process. Yes, I know I can get rid of them. Does that mean that I'm not almost sometimes a slave to my emotional mind? We've got three parts to our brains or three brains, as they said, and that emotional part of the brain just takes over everything. Logic goes out the window and we get triggered. But you know what? When you get triggered by a situation like a third party, it's a really good way to indicate to you where you're at. You ask yourself, why was that my reaction? Why did I get so triggered by this? Take a deep breath in, count down from five, just realign yourself, take a step back from it and try and look at it as objectively as you can. Okay, I got triggered. This made me realize that I hadn't shifted state completely. This made me realize that I still had some deeper inner anxieties about the third party, even though I had said to myself, that's going to break down, that's a whole rebound situation. I had applied all these meanings that why it wasn't going to work, and I was pretty sure of that, but this image is saying to me, six months down the line, it's still an issue. However, when I took a step back from it, I realized that first up, 3D is a delayed mirror. There's always going to be that bit of a time delay. So there's that image that I've seen. It's the old story. I'll say that's the old story. There's a bit of delay. I know that from experience. I know that from experience because it's happened to me where pictures have been put up it's depicting one thing. So anyone who sees that social media outlet are gonna be like, oh, the happy couple. When in fact, it wasn't the case at all. When in fact, it just took a while to update all of that or change pictures or remove them. So there is that aspect to it as well. What meaning are you placing behind the pictures too? Because my very first SP that I've mentioned in my other videos had all these wonderful, wonderful pictures with his new partner. And I made those Terrible comparisons that we always make. Oh, he's treating her better than he's treating me. Oh, they look so happy together. What if they have a fantastic future? Why is it? I I bettered him for her. I did this. And we get resentful and we get hurt and we make it a big deal. We make ourselves feel worse in the process and we end up manifesting more of this negative outcome. So once I had realigned myself, I had always stated to myself, well, that situation is going to break down. That situation is toxic. A picture 
doesn't say anything is not a true indication of the current situation doesn't mean that they're happy together you don't know what is going on behind closed doors and so look for the evidence I don't mean I don't mean looking at their social media looking for evidence to see it's breaking down you're probably not going to find it that way but as in look for the evidence in your own life in your past experiences when it's happened to you or if you've manifested an SP before like I had and how the situation was how it changed how how many times have you seen it on social media? Maybe even your friends are posting up pictures and it's depicting they're having a wonderful time or a wonderful holiday or a wonderful relationship and then your friend has come to you and actually told you the truth about what is going on, the truth about conflicts and it not being so harmonious as social media is depicting. Please, please, please avoid if you can during this time as well to check their social media and the SP. Once again, you're keeping that situation alive. I know for a lot of you, it's very tempting to do so, but you must ask yourself, what am I getting from this? Apart from punishing myself, I know that for some people, they might take a bit of time from it, really work on their uh, techniques, really try and embody that state of, yeah, I'm the chosen one. Okay, I'm the chosen one. But let me just go and check that the 3D has conformed. <laughs> but please avoid doing that. You've got to be 100% up here, in here, making sure that your inner talking is always in harmony with that outcome and just having the complete faith. I mean, if you're manifesting your SP back and your scene is stating that you're in a loving, committed relationship and you're embodying that and you're believing that and your inner talking is aligned with that as well then you cannot fail then it's going to happen so even though this situation might still be going on that has to at some point change and it will do in its own way when you probably least expect it as well and that's something to really hone in on and keep focused on so first up the meanings that you attach to these images, remembering things aren't as they seem on social media, taking a step back, analyzing the situation and using it for your own self-growth, using this situation as your feedback loop so you know, okay, I got triggered, why, what are the thoughts I'm thinking, this is what I need to change, this is what I need to challenge in order to help me to once again feel chosen to realign myself. And so the trigger that I had recently was like I say not something I was looking for and so I was met with this image I had done everything that I have stated in this video that taking a step back that applying the different meaning to it and in addition to that um, of course going to bed in the occupying the state of the wish fulfilled occupying that mood of being loved and chosen that's truly important at this time because SP situations or even in a business that you're not feeling like you're chosen, you're not feeling empowered, you're not feeling like you can do this, you're noticing the obstacles. So if you go to bed capturing the mood that you are chosen, everything else becomes less important. 3D, you become indifferent to it. And once you start becoming indifferent to it, that's when you really know that your imagination and your inner talking has become harmonious. You're indifferent to it now because you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your end desire is coming no matter what. And this bridge, this incident here needs to pan out. This needs to run its course and everything's going to work in your favor because who knows? SP could be having a hell of a time, a nightmare of a time in this situation and relationship and decides that actually, what was I thinking? I'm making comparisons all the time in my new relationship. This isn't what I thought and they come back to you even more loving and appreciative of you as a result, which is what happened with my first SP. So I've done all of this with this current situation and that image that I was met with and I was triggered, immediately started feeling better. Another thing that you can do, which I've also been doing, is because mine was a picture, and you've probably got a picture in your head, even if it wasn't a picture that triggered you, even if you were out and about and you saw SP with a third party, or you saw something else, or just something happened, or someone told you about it, you'll have an image in your head um, that flashes up with that thought that makes you feel all these icky feelings. So what do you do? You get that mental eraser. Okay, there's the picture. <laughs> This still makes me cringe actually, so there's still some more work I need to do, but okay, there's the picture for the sake of this video. Right, I'm getting that mental eraser and I'm wiping it out, I'm rubbing it out. So in my case, my personal case, there was a picture of the two of them, so I rubbed out the third party and I've actually replaced her with an image of uh, a sister, sister of theirs. So 
now to me that's quite a nice picture so my go-to majority of the time not always yet because this has only been a couple of days that I've been doing this so it takes a bit of time sometimes to realign that's okay as well for all of you it will be different depending on how far you are in your journey how much you've shifted state and so many other factors as well but yeah you know a few days okay rub that out replaced it now my go-to is I see that image it doesn't have the same impact in fact it leaves me still feeling good takes my focus away from that situation and this horrible picture that gives me this icky feeling just takes my awareness away yep it's happy family picture that's fine I don't have to worry about the rest of it because now I go back to my end scene and my end scene do ensure because your feelings this rejections particularly for those of you who are doing specific person manifestation you've got a third party make sure that your visual has either your sp telling you something like it was always you i'm sorry forgive me you're the one i, I choose you i choose you it was always about you i prioritize you whatever it is because you're going to discover from this situation what your inner beliefs are what your inner talking has been what your inner feelings what do you identify with what was the state you were occupying that trigger is going to tell you a lot of this stuff so then make sure that your imaginal scene has something that gives you those feelings back that validates you so could be SP telling telling you everything that you need to hear right now in order to feel safe, in order to feel secure, in order to feel loved and chosen, whatever it is. So make sure that you've got that too. I've been doing that myself and throughout the day when I was feeling really low. In fact, we were doing this on my TikTok live last night as well. We did it as a collective and we went into our imaginal scene probably about three, four times, I think, in the end of it. We occupied it for a couple of minutes each time, carried on just chatting, then went back couple of minutes each time that end scene that's all you need it's like a little boost you know it's like having your cup of coffee or a cup of espresso or something there we go I've got my boost now and I'm ready to carry on with the rest of the day oops wait a minute that image is coming back in my head get my eraser out rub it out okay oh I'm feeling a bit low and a bit depressed again let's just saturate my mind with the feeling and hearing auditorily as well my SP telling me that I am loved and chosen that's okay okay great great feel better and you you do start to feel better remember you're not just this whole thing with trying to change your mindset and your self-concept, you're not going to do it with just, I'll sit and do one imaginal act or I might meditate or affirm or whatever for a few minutes each day and then spend the rest of the day feeling really crummy. In the beginning, as you are shifting, as you're working through this, you're gonna to need to do it more and you want to carry that mood with you for as long as you can. And when you feel that mood fading away, you feel yourself falling back into the old mood saturate yourself again as much as you need to remember the body the mind always wants to take you back to a mood that you've been most dominantly in always wants to take you back to that bad mood it's it's called the emotional refractory period so have you noticed for example when you have an argument with someone maybe it's your specific person or your boss or something they say something to know you get really annoyed you stay annoyed for quite a while and then even if they apologize or things die down you'll find that everything that person does for the next few minutes still manages to annoy you still manages to wind you up or anything that happens in your environment will quite easily take you back to that state of being annoyed you just want to remain in that state your mind and your body has become comfortable in that state so we're not going to allow it to be comfortable in the negative state we're going to keep challenging it challenging it get out of that mood we're going to go back to this mood this is the dominant mood that we want this is what we want to be feeling on a regular basis and it takes a little bit of perseverance and then eventually that's going to be your go-to mood and it's going to get easier in time then you can just naturally take your fo focus away from it dry that seed out drown it out or just dry it out or just kill it off because your focus is only going to be on yourself and your end goal feeling chosen feeling prioritized there is no competition remember that and we manifest where our focus goes where our intentions goes where our beliefs are so this is going to really help you out so i hope this video has given you some comfort has given you some tools to use in order to get through this rough patch let me know how you get on with it let me know if you've got any other techniques as well that you use i've also got and i do this to myself 
a guided uh, visual technique to remove the third party from your mind. So if it's still really dominant, you can do that before going to bed or waking up in the morning. Just diminish and shrink down that third party, that competition, that obstacle, shrinking them right down. We're always wishing them love. We're never wishing them hatred. This isn't about vengeance and pushing them away and bad things. We want them to find love. We want them to find their soulmate. We want them to be happy. We want them to find their success or their business opportunities of success. But you go that way. You, you, you can go now and let me have this option. This is the opportunity. This opportunity is for me. This person is for me, but I wish you the best. You go find someone who is for you. So really, really hope that this helps you out. Just uplifts you a little bit because I know from personal experience, I know how painful it is. And I'm sending you big, big hugs, so much love, and I'll see you again soon.